Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for part 15 for the Belgium Grand Prix it's the final round before the summer break and it could be a championship defining weekend for Max Verstappen we come in now to qualifying this is our first one in the session we come out of the final corner we come up to the line and it's put us just inside the top 10. We went again on the same set of tyres as we come to the end of the lap. We got purple in the first sector. We set a personal best in the middle sector. We go take a lot of curb there. Coming out of the best sector tyre up to the line. And it's good enough for the second run. P4. Good lap there. As now we've moved down a bit to P5. But now into the final chicane again we've done the exact same sectors purple and personal best we come up to the line and it's p4 and the second row for the grand prix where there is rain on the way the belgian grand prix a race the great ayrton senna won six times and in 2019 charles leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since a certain michael schumacher in 1992 one of the circuits that makes Formula One, Formula One. Welcome to the Belgian Grand Prix. Spa in the rain. It's about the only thing that could make it more challenging and dramatic in this part of the world. We have plenty of heavy braking zones. We have fast corners. We have undulation. It's going to be a challenge at Lecom, the bus stop chicane, but pretty much everywhere you look out on track. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who will start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Brown, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Russell, Stroll, Albert, Perez, Ocon, Sainz, Sonoda, Joe, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Magnussen, and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down track site for today's race. And we welcome you to the commentary box overlooking the circuit. I'm Alex Jakes and I'm joined by Anthony Davidson. Now, those final hours before a race, did you have a routine? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. Right then, the formation lap has started, and I must say the weather conditions aren't the best today for visibility and grip. As each driver performs this lap, they'll be wanting to settle in and concentrate, as this race in these conditions will require a lot of focus. So as all the cars take their positions on the grid, the teams will be hoping their strategies pay off for them in today's race. But the question I'm asking is which teams have got it right and which teams have got it horribly wrong. Right. So it's a rainy spa then, what will happen today? We're racing for the Belgian Grand Prix. We've tried to find any sort of grip off the line, but we've gone through the middle of Lando Norris and Max Verstappen. We're breaking into the lead of the Grand Prix. Max is turning to the side of us, we've gone wide enough to try and go 
it's really recovery. And now we're skating to try and get out to ball down towards our range. We spun round. George Russell's hit us. Multiple cars have hit us there. As there's a virus hitting us. It's a pile up on the run down to our range. The safety car has been deployed. And what a dramatic start to this drag race. We still struggle to get the power down. This is meant to be a quick shower. It is meant to stop raining fairly early on in this Grand Prix, but we've had a very dramatic start. You can see the amount of cars that have front wing end plate damage or about half the front wing missing just in front of us. That Alpine of Gasly has completely lost his front wing. The Haas has lost half of it. So has the Sauber you're currently following. But what a dramatic start to the Grand Prix. As we're all trundling round at safety car speed, we're all over the back of the Haas. As we head in towards No Name Corner, you can see how heavy the rain is. And we go round the corner, we've dropped it. We've gone over the gravel, the new gravel, and hit the barrier. Front wing damage, if we didn't already have it, we've lost out to the Sauber of Joe. We are going to have to box anyway at the end of this lap with the front wing damage. But it's been a chaotic start to this Grand Prix here at Spa. We, we were for a literally a split second in the lead of the Grand Prix into turn one. As we hit the oh, we've hit the barrier again, we've got no grip on the open lap. You've already seen that everyone started on the hards. We started on the softs because I thought you want to be on the softer tyre if it is raining. But we're going to try and do something very strategic here. We've actually got a penalty from the contact after the first corner as we go into a new front wing. We are going to go into the hards and let's just see how far we can take them. Could we possibly right, take them to Perfect the very end of the this Grand Prix? We'll have that. to wait and see. Loads of cars have all gone on to the mediums. But these we are down the really ahead now. of the horses now and one of the Alpines of Ocon as we then catch the safety car queue. But this one is the most dramatic lap one of the season, I think. This is a replay then of what happened. We actually, the contact was made, I believe, with, with Albon. He's got a great start at the inside of the Mercedes of George Russell down into the first corner gets the Ferrari, you can see the contact there between us and Max and then we just come across and it's literally the smallest of touches has spun us round from our teammate. This is Hamilton's start coming out of turn one, he's side by side with the Red Bull of Perez and then everyone cars all over the road and he's at the back of the Ferrari and he's been hit at the back, I think he's been hit, hit at the back twice there. This is Charles Leclerc's start. As everyone's really struggling to get off the line. He's been bit, bitten off the line by the Aston Martin there of Fernando Alonso. Up the inside, that is Albon. As they head down towards turn one, to, towards our roof. Down, and then there's the spin. And then Leclerc does a good job to avoid it. He just finally waits for us, but he did absolutely smacks in the back by Lewis Hamilton. This is Sergio Perez now coming out of the first corner and now everyone's all over the road and then Perez just has nowhere to go. He stops and he's been hit big time from behind and then hit into the back of George Russell and then everyone starts to go through us. Now this is Joe's point of view going down into turn one. Everyone just bunched up towards the the back of the grid. There's now we might go run down towards a ridge. He has nowhere to go. He's hit the back of Sainz, so we know the outcome then. Sainz hit Hamilton because of Joe hitting him. It's just it's like the M25 going down towards a ridge. Stand still just because we get to win and we travel, spun round, and that's where. Oh, he's made a lot of contact. It was, it was Hulkenberg. It was the horse that drove to the side of us, but he'd already got front wing damage 
before he hit us as well. But as we skip on now to the end of lap four, Lando Norris leads the Grand Prix from Fernando Alonso from Max Verstappen now. We are all the way down at the back. Carlos Sainz has retired during safety the safety car, so maybe he did have lap. some diffusing damage sure or something damage or suspension, something like that. Until the but Stay in until the green it's never come back dry from us. It can't go as bad as Silverstone, where we had those issues going all the way back from the start. So it's just a recovery drive. The rain has stopped. So there'll be much more grip out there now on the track. As we're on the back of Bottas. And as we go on to lap four, let's go okay, racing no again with the absolutely now. left the bus though coming off of the bus up chicane by by Bottas. We're running just ahead of Ocon and Magnussen. As we head down now towards our Rouge, this time cleanly, without spinning round. We skip on to the end of lap 5, start of lap 6, we're going to send it down the inside of Bottas at the source. We get Bottas there, we're up another position. Now we're up into P16. This is a big DRS train though. We need to get through this as quickly and as physically as possible. We're on the back now of Oscar Piastri, who had a great service and he's got having a good spa so far but with his teammate leading the race. We're going to send it down the inside of Piastri though. There's a Red Bull on the inside. We've got three places near enough, I think. Round the outside, we've got two cars now off of that corner. And that's a great move for Deep Space Home. So we've got Gasly in the mix as well. Perez has been done by everyone. But we've gained three places there in two corners. It's a great move by us. But now we might be vulnerable as we head down. Or is Piastri going to have a go at us? Go at um, Gasly. And he is Piastri trying to go around the outside of Gasly. Can he get the job done there both side by side? Gasly spreading inside. Piastri on the outside. And as the Piastri gets his nose in front. Gasly's not giving up. But eventually he has to. This is a replay then of what happened. There was a lock up just in front. And then... Piastri sandwiched in the middle between us and Gasly and then we just got a launch off of, off of the bus stop chicane and then Piastri down the inside of Gasly at the first corner and then they drag race each other all the way down through our roof. Gasly gets a great launch right off of, off of the source and now this is Perez who really had to anchor up to avoid the Avoid Gasly, who I think locked up, or someone in front of Gasly locked up, and he's lost out big time. Got three places for us. This is Gasly's point of view. It's a big lock up there by the Haas, I think it is. And then Gasly on the inside. I mean, it was just a drag race then to the line to turn one. Gasly went out over Piastri, and we pulled off a mighty move to find ourselves in front of three cars. But it was a good job by Gasly then, round the outside. This is George Russell. Is it George? Who, it is George who locked up. And it's Joe as well. Both of them locking up. Which then leads to Gasly having to stamp on the brake. That then falls back into Perez. And then we've just gone round the outside of all of them. Joe right at the front of the battle. Locks up. Waves through Lewis Hamilton. And now we can go back to the live action now as we're all over the back of the half of Nico Hulkenberg who's still yet to score points this season up by the way through there on him but now as we get further down the lap we're going to go down the inside there's a lock up it's Daniel Ricciardo in the RB he's off in the background and into the gravel he gets going again but now he's dropped down to the back Daniel Ricciardo, you wouldn't expect him to make a mistake like that. But now back to us, and there's an engine failure. It's all going on in this lap in the Belgian Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly's engine has gone bang. That Renault engine has given up the ghost. Gasly is out. He joins Carlos Sainz on the sidelines here in Belgium. 
and now we're still racing we've got the Haas we're now going down the inside of George Russell we've got George Russell our fellow Brit he's had a shocking season since he won in the opening round in Australia but next up is Yuki Tsunoda we find ourselves now inside the top 10 after the start I did not expect that this is Lewis Hamilton going wheel to wheel with Joe Bailey both of them have a bit of damage you can see the right end plate of Lewis Hamilton's front wing is missing as now we're going side by side with Yuki Tsunoda down the inside Joe's hanging it down the inside of Lewis Hamilton now we've got a great exit we're going to catch Lewis Hamilton napping and absolutely doing around the outside a no name corner Lewis Hamilton distracted trying to get round the outside of Joe and then loses out to us as we go clean round the outside of him and now Joe is going wheel to wheel with us and we get past Joe and we left this battle to dust this was the front of the DRS train um, it was a bit like Japan Gasly, with Gasly and Joe just slipped through each other but this time it was Lewis Hamilton and Joe Hamilton goes back down the inside of Joe and then he's failed the previous time he's getting him back but Joe's coming back at Lewis Hamilton there Hamilton just can't break away he really should but the damage is really costing him there yeah, but so has the Saab has got damage as well. They're side by side. Joe trying to hang it around the outside of Lewis Hamilton here. Has he got the job done? Not yet. He's still around the outside of him. Through the long right hander. Now through no name. Lewis Hamilton's going to have to give up. And he does. Now to us. Because we're still going on these hard tyres. And those on the mediums are further up the grid have started to box for their pit stop and now we're just falling back into them there's no point really fighting these we're up front though Max Verstappen got past Lando Norris Lando's actually lost out to Alonso and Max got into the lead where in just 10 laps time I said it's a slow pit stop is slow it's slow for Red Bull the gap was so close that could be an issue for Red Bull as Max comes out of the pits. Into the pits though, one lap later, Alonso has been done by Lando Norris and follows him in. They're both in here. There's now Albon at pits as well for us. And Lando's miles up the road. But where is Lando compared to Max Verstappen, also Fernando Alonso, Lando's already out of the pits, Max Verstappen comes out of turn one, he's only just beat out Fernando Alonso, but Lando Norris is in the net lead of the Grand Prix just behind us. That poor pit stop may have cost Red Bull at the win here potentially, as now Max has been allowed to catch back up as Lando Norris is all over the back of us, Lance Stroll is leading he's still yet to pit there's not really much point us fighting this because they're gonna get us anyway our fight isn't with them our fight is really with Lance Stroll here and potentially our teammate these ties are still feeling good can we get them to the end We've lost out to Lando now when will Max get us he's gonna try is he down the inside at a reach what better of it but now he's gonna get a great slip stream he's gonna have us here we're gonna be a sitting duck as we head down towards the chicane he's getting closer he's going to the inside max verstappen down the inside of us takes second place and i don't think it'd be long before fernando alonso follows him through as well also the ferrari in the background the any remaining Ferrari in this Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc as well as Max is really on the back of Lando now and Leclerc is side by side with Fernando Alonso who's going to get ahead? Charles Leclerc does he does Fernando Alonso before we even get to the bus stop chicane 
And now Leclerc, as we head down towards La Source, turn one is on the inside of us. Charles Leclerc is going to take us out for the final point on the podium. And he gets us. It would be good if this was for position and we generally were in the fight here and it wasn't because of the strategy. But one day maybe, one day. As Max is going for it on on Lando Norris for the lead down the inside. Max I think has got Lando as we free overtake Charles Leclerc with the great slipstream. Yes, the as you can see there, Max and Stappen retakes the lead off the Grand Prix. He only does Red Bulls. Poor pit stop. It's now we run wide. The Claire's trying to get around the outside of us. Is he now going to do the old switcheroo? Coming off a no name corner. He's on the inside of us. Going through pull one. He's got the job done. We're off the track. We come back on the track. Fernando Alonso has followed. Leclerc free, we've lost out to both of them and in the background you may have seen it's Lance Stroll and Alex Albon and at this point of the Grand Prix these tyres you can see they're fine and they felt fine so let's get these to the end of the race if we can I was told by Mark that Albon had some sort of issue with the car so our job here is really to let him through because he's going to get us and make this Williams as wide as possible to hold up Lance Stroll enough so look, so Albon can get some good points with blocking Stroll off here Albon is through on us as now Albon started to get away here comes Lance Stroll as we go through the bus stop chicane we're doing what we can these tyres are very old now compared to Strolls as now we get closer and closer. Does Lance Stroll we make that big mistake? We may be a sitting duck here heading down through our ridge towards the chicane at the bottom of the hill. And now he's gonna go is he to the outside of the ridge? No, he thinks better of it. I would not want to go side by side with Lance Stroll through there. It's only gonna end one way. But now as we try and break the toe, there's nothing we can do because Lance Stroll's gonna go to the outside. We're gonna try and keep it pinned at the inside. But Lance Stroll gets us round the outside at the chicane. We've done the best we could to get Albon up the road but this is it then lap 21 of 22 Lando Norris retakes the lead of the Belgium Grand Prix off of Max Verstappen now though it's the final lap of the Grand Prix Max has stuck with the McLaren as they go through through uh, Rouge down the Kemmel straight Max is getting closer and closer can he get the win on the final lap of the Grand Prix. They're side by side. Max retakes the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. He's made overtakes on the last lap already in this career mode. He did it in Australia. He was beaten on the line. Lando's going for a late lunge at the bus stop chicane. But Max Verstappen is going to run the final corner. He came into the final corner, a three-time world champion. He's going to round the final corner, cross the line, and now be a four-time world champion in 2024. Lando Norris comes home for P2. Leclerc holds off Alonso for P3. Albon just held off Stroll. And we are going to come home for our first points since Monaco. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. And with that, another year of Formula One draws to a close and a new World Drivers' Champion is declared. Another entry added to that prestigious list of the sport's most incredible drivers. That's a spectacular victory then. And with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. And that's two wins in a row now, of course, and it marks the fact that it's not a fluke. So, you know, their head's in the right space. What more can we see going forward? Here come today's winners.
The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they've secured here. Verstappen is a four-time champion of the world. Unstoppable then. He wins the Grand Prix on the final lap to win the world title. It's been unstoppable this season. It's a bit of a shame Max has won it so soon. We go to Zandvoort next, which would have been incredible to see him win the championship at. Lando denied the win then he, that he so nearly got overtaking Max on the penultimate lap, but he comes home for P2. Charles Leclerc comes home for a great P3. Fernando Alonso when lucky to get podium. Out of that comes home for P4. Albon, great result. P5. We really helped him out in that because he did have an issue with the engine, we were told. Lance Roll, and then we come home for P7. Our first points since we won in Monaco and it's a great way to bounce back after what happened in Silverstone last time out. It's a very mixed race from the massive pileup coming out of Town 1 to making those tyres last physically as possible. They went forever. We did the entire race on one set of tyres basically and found ourselves with some points. Down at the back there was two retirements, Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly and it was George Russell who was the final finisher of the day in P18. So as we've said Max Verstappen is champion of the world. An 82 point gap is what he has over Charles Leclerc in the Drivers World Championship. Lewis Hamilton has dropped like a stoner as well after this weekend. He's been jumped by Leclerc, Lando and Fernando Alonso as well. Shocking weekend for Mercedes as well. Hamilton getting caught up in that battle with Joe. We are still P10 in the Drivers Championship. We were being slowly caught by Piastri, but Piastri's had a bad day, so we've pulled away from him. Also great points for Albon, so he's started to close the gap back on Piastri. He lost that position last time out at Silverstone. And then down at the back, Haas finally got a point with Nico Hulkenberg. So it's now Magnussen who is bottom of the pile. There's just four cars who are still yet to score this season. In terms of constructors then, Red Bull are still very strong. They can't wrap up the constructors just yet, but they're very much the favourites ahead of Ferrari. We are P6 and it's just Williams. It's just Alpine now who are the only team not to score this season with Hulkenberg scoring for Haas. So that's been then the Belgium Grand Prix. It started wet, it started dramatic, but in the end we've pulled off one of our greatest drives this season and brought home some points and it's double points for the team as well. We go into the summer break on a high for us as a team. We'll see you after the summer break when we go racing in the Netherlands. Goodbye.